Hey Isaac, so last time we looked at um, sketching out some of the ideas of this, uh, this game, I'm going to not call it Pong, a uh, squash Pong uh, game that you're going to implement with the Pi Game library. Where do we go from here? So basically what we did in the previous video was to basically try to understand how the screen will look like, the things that are going to be fixed and the objects that are going to be moving around. And it was all about defining the coordinates of the different walls and the paddle and the ball and everything, right? And also we were thinking about, okay, these two objects, the ball and the paddle, they will be moving and they will have some attributes. So basically the coordinates in, where, in which they are and also we, they will have some functionality. They will be able to move and to show and update their position, right? So this is what we did. And this is how we define it initially, right? So we know the ball will have coordinates X and Y and some class variables like the color and the radius of that ball. Actually, I just realized that the color should be something that the paddle should also have probably if you want to, right? Um, so now what we're gonna be doing is to implement that using the library called Pygame. I've done my homeworks before this. Whenever you use a library like this, you need to do your own homeworks. You need to go to the documentation uh, and read it carefully and try to find which functions are useful for you for whatever your purposes are. Uh, I've done that. I'm gonna show you quickly on the screen the Pygame website. So here you have plenty of classes, definitions, and functionality. So you have a class to define the color, the display, to draw, to take care of events, to draw stuff with fonts, images, anything you like, really. So you can do very cool games using uh, all the functionality. I'm gonna stick to something very simple in this video. We're gonna start off by importing the library, right? So if you're gonna be using this, you need to install the library in your computer, right? Um, but whenever you have done that, you need to import Pygame. And the very, very first thing that you need to do is to initiate this. So basically you need to call a function called init. If you're using one IDE like I'm doing in this video, I'm using a spider, you can actually do cool things. You can just run it here and it's just saying hello from Pygame community, right? So it's not doing much. That's what we do when we run this piece of code. But in this case, so whenever you do programming, typically you only get that console, right? And then you get output there. But now we're gonna change that. We want to be able to draw a screen, right? And to do that, you need to use one function from Pygame. Uh, you can look up on the documentation for this, but we're gonna basically call a display and we're gonna have to set the mode. And the mode is not anything else but how big the screen will look like. So we could do manually here, just coordinate, for example, 1200, 600, width and height, and that will create a screen. So I'm gonna run it. Something very cool about this IDE is I can just select a bit of code and run it, shift, control, and then you create a black window. Interesting, huh? Actually, it is black on my operating system. It doesn't have to be black in your operating system. Why? Because whenever we call this function, what is happening under the hood is that this is making what we call a system call. So this library is talking to the operating system and telling, hey, can you please create a screen for me in which I'm gonna be doing the drawing, right? But it's not the user actually doing that directly, it's the communication with the operating system. So that's why it depends where you run the library, the behavior might change slightly, right? So whenever you run this, uh, you could store the output of that function on a variable. Why I want to do that? Because I know this function will return something called a surface, which is where I'm gonna be drawing stuff. So one thing is the display and the surface is the black part that was there and which I'm gonna be drawing things, right? Something I don't like from here, uh, Sean, from programming point of view, from the programming point of view, you will never want to do this. Otherwise, Torsen and I will kill you if we see that you are hard coding values here, right? So normally you have some variables in which you store those values and then that makes your program way more flexible. So if you allow me, what I'm going to do is to put a comment here and say, here are gonna be my variables. And the first thing I want to do um, is to draw the main scenario, right? That's what I want to do down here. And for now, I'm gonna define variables with, which is 
1200 for now and height so this is gonna be 600 yeah so now instead of using these values here hard coded you put it here with and high okay cool huh? with that we haven't done much we spent like two minutes just to get this sorted and uh, we haven't done much and i want to to draw something right so i want to do the first rectangle the first wall at the top right and, and for that what you need is a function uh, that is within the class draw in pygame so this one is within draw and then you need to use rectangle and then you might be wondering well how do i use this uh, function well, what you have to do once again is to go on the API on the documentation and read it a quick trick that you could do here is if you want to you can go here to the console and then you could write help and then the name of the function and then you will have what the function is expecting so it's expecting something called a surface color and then the rectangle itself which is a different type of object so basically initially I have to say, I'm gonna draw this on the surface that I just created when initializing the display. Then I have to define the color, right, of that one, right? So this is in a different class that we call color. It understand me if I say I want it white, as simple as that. And then we actually have to draw uh, the rectangle, which is in a, a pi game dot rect. And then you have to provide Two things for that one right once again i do know uh, how this library works perfectly so now you need to know what are the coordinates of the top left corner and then you need to indicate the width and the height of that rectangle so we actually did the numbers before we're doing it once again so the coordinate the initial coordinate the top left corner of that rectangle is basically zero zero right i'm gonna put the tuple zero zero for that one and then you need to indicate in a, do in a different tuple you need to indicate the width and how big we want that border so the width is going to be the same width as we define here because it's all the way on the screen but then we want to draw that for a few pixels you were saying 5 or 10 or 30 well do not guess probably the best thing to do is to define another variable border we say for example 20 right and then we are going to be using that and in case we want to change the values we can do it at the top of the program right so if you do this and now we run this code and then you look for pygame you will not see anything and you will be all disappointed that you will say w w why why it doesn't work well pygame is a bit funny so you, you you i did the drawing but i didn't tell pygame i did it i just basically said uh, i use this function yes but you need to tell the surface that there have been changes. How you do that? Well, you need to call a different function that is called flip. So you need to do pygame.display because you want to tell the display to refresh. And then we flip it. And whenever I run this, I should be able to see it now on top, as you can see here on the video, right? So is that border good enough? We want it bigger? Oh, we can see white at the top. Yeah, oh, it, I didn't see it at first. Yeah, okay. We can make it bigger if you want to. It's really up to you, right? Let's leave it like that for now. I can only see one line though, is that right? A line across? Yes, so only one line. So look, we have to write a full instruction just to draw that rectangle there, right? So now we, you, what you need to do is to draw the other three, right? But I'm not gonna be doing this in the video. I have pre-cooked this three and I'm gonna just copy paste with your permission because otherwise it's gonna take a long time. And actually I was doing something funny before I put the color here directly when calling this function rectangle but now I have done that three times so what we could do is to create a variable in which we can store what is gonna be the foreground color and what is gonna be the background color so here you can store the result of calling this pi gain color y you can put it in this variable and now our code will be much nicer just by using fg color in that way so there you go if now you you do this and you run this code you will have the three walls Ta -da. yeah perfect yeah very good look at this now i'm gonna try to close this window ah what's happening it doesn't work it will never work why because we haven't told the operating system what to do we haven't told our program what to do when the user is clicking this 
cross. So the first thing you need to do is to handle this. And the only way to close this is to using a function called pygame.quit. By the way, this function will not work in all operating systems easily. So if you're using a Mac, you need something else that I, I will not be covering here. But if you do that, yes, so that disappeared now. So that's the game. But if I run the whole game now, it's going to be doing the following. Look, boom, just showing it and closing it. Uh, that's not good, is it? It's quitting itself, right? So it's basically creating the display, drawing the three walls, and, and then saying, no, and have to quit. But that's not what I want. What I want is to check if the user has actually clicked on that cross, and then I will close the program, never before. So what we need to do for that is to create a loop, an infinite loop that will be running until the user says otherwise. So we're gonna have a loop that is gonna be true forever until something happened. And for things happening, Pygame has a different class called events and it's a way to control what is happening, how the user is interacting with that window, right? So there is a bit of detail that I'm gonna skip here, but basically you need to call a class on the event and pull events. And whenever you got an event that is called quit, that is basically when the user has clicked on that uh, cross, the program will stop never earlier. So basically we need to check here a condition and check the type of event that we've got. And whenever it, that is equal to quit, which is a predefined variable within Pygame, whenever that happens, you break the loop. Otherwise, the program will continue here and will not do anything at all, just waiting for the user to do something. So that while true means that it will carry on doing everything above it while... So that's a very good question, Sean. So, I'm drawing everything, right? It draws it and then it doesn't do anything. Just basically stays here, just looping here, doing nothing, waiting for the user to do something or waiting for us to write something within this while loop. And that's the way we have to somehow stop this window from closing. And it will only close when I now click on that one. Ta-da, works, right? Beautiful. All right, so, so far we have actually just designed how the game will look like. We haven't even drawn yet the ball or the paddle. And that takes us quite a bit of time just to understand how the display works, how to put the walls, right? And how to make the program to stay there and wait for the user to do something and to play or to draw the ball. Um, so this is what we're gonna do for now, just to draw the environment. And in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to create the ball, how to move it around and how to put the pebble and move it around as well, okay? I put before only two parameters, but now we have two more, which is the speed that we want this to go, let's say on the horizontal axis and the vertical one. So initially, for example, I'm gonna say that I just want the ball to move horizontally, not vertically. So the one